Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name and thank you today. Thank you because you've given us this special time in our church, in particular in the Palai Bible Church, so that we can come together, seek the face of the Lord, and be what you want us to be in every area of our lives, so that when the trumpet shall sound and the Lord will come, none of us will be left behind in Jesus' name. We pray that all members, all workers, all leaders, all Levites will seek the face of the Lord and you grant us victory in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Be with us, Lord, and speak to every heart. Touch every life and turn us around and make us the men and the women, the boys and the girls who are to be for the glory of your name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at the message considering the subject confronting and conquering the giants. Confronting and conquering the giants. When we talk about the giants, our primary reference will be to the children of Israel. They were going from Egypt unto Canaan. And on the way, a report came that there were giants in the land they were going. Because of those giants, many of them could not get to the land of promise. As you think about the children of Israel, those giants terrified them, intimidated them, and discouraged them that they could not get to their possession. When we think about the giants today, you are thinking personally about yourself. What is it that stands before you like a giant wanting to hinder you from getting to that promised land? That thing, whatever it is, and that person, whatever he is, you are going to confront that thing and that person. And this day, you will overcome in Jesus' name. As you think about the giants, for David, it was a different thing. For Saul, it was a different thing. That's why I would say, you need to look at your personal life. And look at the things that surround you. And say, what is the giant before me? What is it that confronts me? What is it to hinder me? What is it to stop my journey in getting to that land of promise? And you want to fight against that thing? War against that same battle, against that same, so that by the grace of God and the strength of the Lord, you will make it, you will not die by the wayside in Jesus' name. Confronting the giants and conquering the giants. Numbers chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 26. Numbers. Chapter 13 from verse 26. And he went and came to Moses and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back words unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. That's what you can say that the land the Lord has promised us, that glory land, the beulah land that God has promised us, that paradise, that heavenly place the Lord has promised us, it's real. It's definite. We have testimonies of it from the Old Testament and the New Testament and from the Lord Jesus Christ who has gone on to glory. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. We have the testimony of that from Paul the Apostle. He went to the third heavens and he saw the glories of heaven, the beauties of heaven and the greatness of heaven. We have this testimony from Stephen. And Stephen saw the glory of of heaven he said I see Jesus Christ on the right hand side of God and he welcomed him home as for the land flowing with milk and honey there's no doubt about it but then the children of Israel 
out of Israel of that land of promise there was something that confronted them that they couldn't confront and they couldn't conquer they couldn't overcome look at verse 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great and moreover we saw the children of Anak there look at that moreover as good as the land is as beautiful as the land is as wonderful as the land is we saw the children of Anak there the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan and Caleb stilled, silenced, stopped the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it we are well able I said we are well able in the strength of the Lord by the promise of the Lord in the name of Jesus the authority of that name and by the power of the Holy Ghost we the children of God we who are born again we those who are converted we those who are committed unto Christ through and through and we who are willing to follow the Lord all the days of our lives we are well able to overcome and to possess the land but start your one but the man that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people but they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it a man of a great stature, those are the giants. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. The failure of the children of Israel to get to the land of promise was because they were not willing to confront the giants on their way they were not willing to move on and conquer the giants on their way and the failure of many people today is that they might try to confront giants in other people's lives giants in other people's families but when it comes to them for them to face the real issue and confront their own giants and conquer their own giants they are not willing they are not able and because of that they are stopped in their tracks and they are not able to reach the land you will reach the land that glorious city prepared for the children of God that place the Lord has said is preparing for the children of God now the paradise of God we will reach that land in Jesus name but it's going to take some commitment it's going to take some consecration it's going to take some confrontation it is going to take some determination saying this giant will not stop me it will not stop you and by faith by prayer and by all the gifts the Lord has given us we confront those giants we overcome in Jesus name I'm considering three points number one considering the giants that hinder progress considering the giants that hinder progress number two confronting the giants that hinder possession confronting the giants that hinder possession number three conquering the giants that hinder prayer power
prayer power. Conquering the giants that hinder prayer power. Number one, considering the giants that hinder progress. Come back to that numbers chapter 13 again. Verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. Verse 32. They brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that were sold in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Well, what giants actually stopped them? When you think about it, all these children of Israel, apart from the twelve, the twelve that were sent to the land to search the land. All these children of Israel never really saw a giant. The multitudes of them, the thousands and the millions of them, never really saw the giants. But the report of the giants, the news of the giants brought, number one, discouragement. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 28. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28. Whither shall we go up? That means, how can we make progress? How can we move on? Because look at this, our brethren have discouraged our hearts. That's the giant. As you look at your life, you might find you have a good intention. You have a good desire. You have a good proposal. You have a good dream. And you have a good pursuit. You want to be this and that spiritually. But then discouragement comes in. It might be a little thing that brings the discouragement. Maybe the tongue of the twelve that brings the discouragement. Maybe the evil report of the people who have gone before you that brought the discouragement, but all the same. Whatever brings the discouragement, you find in your life the discouragement is like a giant that wants to stop your way. Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Number two, disobedience. Look at that same chapter 1, verse 26. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Have you found your lie? The Lord commands you a very plain commandment. A very clear commandment. And it tells you what to do, where to do it, when to do it, and how to do it. What to do. Very clear. This is your calling. This is your duty. This is your responsibility. If you're going to move up, if you're going to grow, if you're going to move on in the things of the Lord, here is what the Lord is calling you to do. The watch and then the when. When are you to do it? And the Lord gave you the time. This is the time to do it. Might be restitution. Might be witnessing to somebody. Might be a clear commandment that you know this is the word of the Lord unto me. And instead of rising up immediately, early, and doing it, you delayed, you disobeyed, and that now has stopped you from making progress. 
Every time you want to do something, you remember how about that other thing that the Lord had commanded. Notwithstanding, verse 26, ye would not go up, that's why they did not make progress. They wouldn't go up, they wouldn't obey the Lord at the time he was calling them. But you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, murmuring. Look at verse 27. And ye murmured in your tents. And ye murmured in your tents. If you could cut off the seas of the tongue, if you could cut off the grumbling, the complaining, the murmuring, You'll make more progress in one month than you have made in the past year. If you just talk today, and you just say, from today, this giant of murmuring, and this giant of complaining, this giant of grumbling, I'm going to confront it, and I'm going to conquer it. You'll see that you make a lot of progress. Hey, look at Numbers chapter 14. In Numbers chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 26. Numbers chapter 14, reading from verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? which murmur against me. You see, that was a real giant. The Lord could get rid of the giants in the land of Canaan for them. But the real giant, they couldn't confront. They wouldn't confront. The real giant, they were not willing to confront in their lives. The murmuring cut it off. Today, you'll make progress. I said, you'll make progress. But if you make murmuring, grumbling, complaining a constant companion in the church, a constant companion in your family, a constant companion in your place of work, it's like you are married to murmuring, you are married to grumbling, you are married to complaining. But if you make a separation today, and you say, murmuring no more, grumbling no more if you will say today complaining no more argument no more when i discover the will of god the word of god there is but one thing to do just obey discouragement is gone disobedience is gone murmuring is gone look at verse 28 say unto them as truly as i live says the lord as she have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Which have murmured against me. Number four. Evil report evil report and she was spoken of the evil report of the twelve actually of the ten twelve went but two of them were different Caleb was different Joshua was different but the rest the ten they had this evil report and it was that evil report that brought the whole problem the use of the tongue, but all the other children of Israel, they also had problem with their tongue. And as I look around, as you look around you, can you point at somebody whose tongue has not been like an arresting giant that stopped their way, either stopped their progress in the place of work, or stop their progress in the work of God in the ministry. Or stop their progress and the fulfillment of the promise of God in their families. If you look around, you'll see there are people who destroy themselves with their tongues. 
They destroy their prospects with their tongues. They destroy their families with their tongues. They fight against themselves with their tongue. And because of the use of that tongue, the evil utterances. They are not able to make progress. In Numbers chapter 14 verse 22. Numbers chapter 14 verse 22. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and are not hearkening to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, and the men which Moses sang to such the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur. They made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. It says, even those men, verse 37, that they bring the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephone, which one of the men that went to search the land lived still. I pray you will live. I said you will live. Because the language of Caleb the language of Joshua was different. Make your language different. Language of faith. Language of truth. Language of truthfulness. And language of righteousness. Point number two. Confronting the giants that hinder possession. Confronting the giants that hinder possession. We are the people that will possess the land. Can I have an amen there? We will possess the land in Jesus' name. But you know, possessing the land is not child's play. There are giants to confront. The giants that stand before you. Like the giants that stood before them. And they were willing to look straight if you are willing to look straight at those giants and there you have the wherewithal to confront those giants that's the only way you can possess the land and the promise that the Lord has given you and let's look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 in 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 as you read from verse 4 it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. New Testament, those are giants. The giants that want to stop us from possessing the fulfillment of the promises of God. And the promises range from salvation to healing to deliverance to freedom to prosperity to sanctification to holiness, to power, the power of the Holy Ghost and all the other promises of God, precious and extraordinary. It says, for weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. That's one of them. Casting down imaginations. When those uh, spies came back and they spoke about the sons of Anak. And they spoke about the giants. They were not there. But the children of Israel began to imagine. 
as they search. That's the lad eats up the people. They could just imagine in their own mind that if we go there, even before the giants fight against us, the lad will eat us up. Imagination. Do you sometimes have that? And imagination can be stronger than reality. That's what they found. That as they imagined, then they began to pray. Why are we going into the land? Why don't we die? Why don't we die in the wilderness instead of going there and being killed and swallowed up and eaten up by the land? Because of those imaginations, sometimes it comes to you. A lion is in the way. A lion is in the street. If I go there, if I go there, I will lose my life. And there is nothing to fear, but just your imagination will cast those imaginations down in Jesus' name. Casting down imaginations and every high sin that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it to captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And let's look at them one by one. What? Are the giants that confront us today? What were the giants that confronted them at that time that hindered their possession of the land? Number one, fear. How do you confront fear? You confront fear with faith. Whatever you hear, whatever you see, that tries to bring fear into your heart, you confront fear with faith. Number two, compromise. Thus many times the Lord has promised this and this and that. And when you are about to possess, then some voices come to you and they want you to cut corners and adjust things and adulterate the word and the will of God. Compromise. How do you confront compromise? Confront compromise with courage. The courage that stands. And the courage that says this is what God has said. And I'm going to live. I'm going to move. I'm going to pray. I'm going to act according to the word of the Lord. You confront compromise with courage. Number three. Hypocrisy. You see sometimes, and you look at the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, and what he spoke against over and over and over again, that hypocrisy was the major thing that hindered those Pharisees from possessing the new life he brought, the spiritual life he brought, and the fulfillment of the promises of God to the sons of Abraham. Hypocrisy hindered them. How do you confront that giant of hypocrisy? With honesty. As you look at hypocrisy, the temptation to be hypocritical, the temptation to be to pretend like you are what you are not. Honesty is what will come against that hypocrisy. Every time that giant of hypocrisy rises up, you say, hey, wait a minute, here is honesty, and you confront that hypocrisy, you'll overcome in Jesus' name. I'm waiting for your amen over there. Now, as you look at the children of Israel, you come to the New Testament and it tells us about the thing that really hindered them. The giant that really hindered them from entering into the promised land. You find this big, great, mighty giant before them. Unbelief. Unbelief. It was unbelief that actually hindered them from getting into the land. The real giant in everybody's life that stops us and hinders us from getting into the land is unbelief why couldn't we cast that evil spirit out because of your unbelief for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Unbelief, how do you confront that? You confront unbelief with unchangeable trust. 
unchangeable confidence in God, unchangeably leaning upon the Lord, knowing what he has said will be done. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word, my promise shall never pass away. As we look at the children of Israel, it tells us one of the giants that really confronted them, that hindered them from entering the land is hardness of heart. Hardness of heart. They are teachers, they are preachers, they are priests, they are Levites, but their hearts were hardened against the word of the Lord. How do you confront hardness of heart? You confront hardness of heart with the circumcision of the heart. In your heart, will I put within you? I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. In fact, Moses even had to condescend unto them. Because when they asked Jesus the question and said, Why then did Moses give us the law that we could separate and divorce the wife? If the wife is not pleasing us, Jesus said, That's not the law of God. But because of the hardness of your heart, you are left to your own ways. That's why they couldn't actually live in the center of the perfect will of God because of the hardness of heart. Number one, fear. Number two, compromise. Number three, hypocrisy. Number four, unbelief. Number five, hardness of heart. Number six, besetting sin. Besetting sin over and over and over again. They fell into that before, they fell into it again. They fell into it again over and over. And the Lord said, There's no point. They will never come to the knowledge of the truth by their deliberate choice. How do you confront besetting sin? You confront besetting sin with self denial. You learn to say no. The devil wants you to repeat that thing again. You say no. Your flesh demands you should repeat that thing again. You say no. It is self denial that confronts that besetting sin. Number seven for the children of Israel inordinate desire. Inordinate desire. The lust of the flesh. They wanted it by all means. And you confront that with the crucified the desire to remember giants G the greed inordinate desire I want this I want this I want this things you may not even use things you may not even need I want that I want that like the two and a half tribes they wanted the parcel of land on this side of Jordan and the greed became the giant that did not allow them to get into the land. I, immorality. It's a giant for many people. That fornication, that adultery, that fleshly art, or what you might call pornography, immorality, a giant confronting people, you will overcome. A, anger, anger. You find Moses, even that great man of God, he became angry. Shall we bring water out of the rock for you? And that sin became a terrible sin for him. Thank God he went to heaven, but he missed the promised land. Greed, immorality, anger, negligence, negligence. Yeah, what you should do today, I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. Develop your faith, I'll do it later. Read your Bible, I'll do it later. Be strong right now, I'll do it later. Come on, confront, compromise and danger with courage, I'll do it later. And eventually, the negligence makes you not to be able to possess the land. How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, T is your tongue. It's your tongue. Do something about that. 
because the tongue hinders many people already we've seen how it hindered those people from getting to the land the tongue the tongue bring that tongue under control there's a power of life and the power of death in the tongue and i pray the lord will give you the victory in jesus name did i hear you say amen, amen. whatever the giant sir you will overcome you have overcome I'm looking at point number three, conquering the giants that hinder prayer power. Conquering the giants that hinder prayer power. Well, it is, uh, you can bring everything in it, just one word. Psalm 66, I'm reading from verse 18. Psalm 66, we're looking at verse 18. If I regard iniquity, if I regard transgression, if I regard sin, if I regard evil doing, if I regard disobedience, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The prayer power of the child of God that he wants us to come with a repentant heart. He wants us to come with a forgiving personality. He wants us to come without any chain or any cord of sin holding us back. He wants us to come free from sin by the cleansing of the blood of the lamb free from sin by the salvation that jesus gives free from sin by a determined effort as we have come to the lord jesus christ to bear the cross and to deny self and to deny whatever it is that we want to get you back and get you back and get you back into that sin and then be able to say by the grace of god my sins are forgiven my sins are cleansed the power of sin is broken and taken away and then you can come with a clear conscience before the lord and when you pray the lord will answer your prayer i said when you pray the lord will answer your prayer isaiah chapter 65 i'm reading from verse 24 isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 and it shall come to pass that before the call i will answer and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. When there is no sin, when there is no guilt, when there is no condemnation, when he has cleansed you and washed you and purged you, and when he makes you to live a life that is righteous and holy, as you open your mouth like this, miracle will drop on you. The power of God will work in our lives in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 24. It tells us in verse 24, And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Sickness will be banished forever. Infirmity will be banished forever. All those things, this one is troubling me, that one is knocking at my brain, that one is uh, pinching my body, all that will stop in Jesus' name. The inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Iniquity is gone, sin is gone, evil is gone, transgression is gone. There will be power in your prayer in Jesus' name. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22, verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, he'll build you up. And thou shalt put away iniquity. How? How? Far from your tabernacles, if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. What's the result of that? Verse 24, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Prosperity is coming your way. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be the defense. Protection will be for you in Jesus' name. And thou shalt have, and thou shalt have, and thou shalt have.
plenty of silver for then shalt thou have thy delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows verse 28 thou shalt also decree a sin and it shall be established unto thee Thou shalt also decree thing. You know, when sin is gone, when backsliding is gone, when disobedience is gone, when the hardened heart has been knocked and crushed by the blood of the Lamb, and He has given you a heart, a heart of flesh, it says, Thou shalt also decree sin, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. It's time for your light to shine. I said it's time for your light to shine. It's time for you now to get out of this Kadesh Paneer and all those giants and the news of the giants that have stopped you until this day. You now leave all the giants behind you say, we're moving on. I said we're moving on and you in particular, you're moving on in Jesus name. Why don't you rise up now? We're getting into the possession of our inheritance. We're getting into the possession of what the Lord has for us. Because all the giants that have stopped you until this time, look at them eyeball to eyeball and be willing to confront them. And let nothing bring fear in your heart. Let nothing bring timidity to your personality. And you say, the land is there, the promised land, the promises of God for my spirit, for my soul, for my body, for my family, for my work, everything I lay my hands upon. And since the promises are there, I'm not going to allow any giant to stop me. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Mention the giants you know, the giants you know, that have confronted you until this time. That every time you look like chicken, you look like, you know, like a weakling, as if you could not do anything. But today is a day for your victory. Today is the day for you to overcome. Today is the day for you to say, I am going to stand. I am going to stand. I'm going to confront. Is it the giant of fear? Rise up and confront it with faith. Is it the giant of compromise? Rise up and confront it with courage and say, Nothing will stop me. Nothing will stop me. Is it the giant of hypocrisy? Hypocrisy. Let there be honesty. Make it like your manifesto. Make it like your decision. Make it like something. This is my vow. This is my covenant. Dishonesty, hypocrisy will not be a giant that will ever stop me. Again, unbelief. Unbelief that you know I about this, I about that, that you are not believing the promises of God. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And if you can only believe, all things are possible unto him who believes. You tell the Lord, Lord, I believe. This is the day of the fulfillment of the promise of God in my life. Hardness of heart, stubborn will, stubborn heart. That you are always going to have your way. The stubborn will. You say, let me be broken today. Let it be broken today. The stubborn will will only hinder you from getting to where God wants you to get to. It will only hinder you from achieving all that God has for you. And you are saying that hardness of heart, it must go. It must go. Bring that heart to Calvary. Bring that heart to the cross again. And let there be circumcision of heart. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith, by the faith, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. Self-denial, self-denial. I put my body under. I put my eyes under. I put my ears under. I put my flesh under. I put my legs under control. I put my hands under control. I put my tongue under control. I put my body under. Be in control, be in charge. Lest by any means, after you have preached to others, minister to others, you yourself should be a cast away. Say, that will not happen. The giant of greed, I confront it. Giant of immorality, I confront it. Giant of anger, giant of anxiety, I confront it. 
giant of negligence. I confront you this giant of an evil tongue, of a carnal tongue, and of a careless tongue. I confront it. Confront everything and say, Lord, I'm going to possess my inheritance. You will, you will, you will. Conquer them, overcome. Conquer them and overcome. You will possess the promised land. In Jesus' name we pray. And the conquerors say, you have conquered already. I said you have conquered already. Just make sure that all those things that are conquered, you keep them under. They will not overcome your lives anymore. No sickness will overcome your life. No infirmity will overcome your life. No evil power, evil personality, evil spirit will overcome you in Jesus' name. If you believe, since you believe, as you believe, you will see the glory of God. The glory of God in your family. The glory of God in your body. The glory of God in your walk of your hand. The glory of God, everything you set your hand on, as all those giants, you are not afraid of giants anymore. Anybody afraid there? Anybody afraid there? Overcomers, where are you? Overcomers, I said, where are you? You will overcome in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you make every one of your children overcomers and conquerors, victors, in Jesus' name. That giant of fear, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. The giant of compromise, you will not stand. You will not stay in any of the lives of the children of God. Oh Lord, I pray, grant your people, inject the spirit with courage in Jesus' name. Giant of hypocrisy, we bring you under our feet. We conquer you today. We overcome you today. Oh Lord, I pray, bring honesty in every heart in Jesus' name. Giant of unbelief. We say no to you. We believe our God. We believe our Savior Jesus Christ. We believe the scriptures. We believe the promises of God. The promises of God are going to be yes and amen for every one of us in Jesus' name. Without any unbelief, without any shadow of doubting, we confront every mountain right now. Mountain of sickness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Mountain of spiritual attack and spiritual oppression, I confront those mountains now and I command you, mountain, come out in Jesus' name. Mountain of curse, mountain of yoke, you will not remain there. We know that you have remained there for a long time because of unbelief, but this time we put unbelief under our feet. We will trample on that unbelief and with faith in our heart. I say, mountain of curse, mountain of yoke, come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, you will not remain there. The giants will not stop us. Unbelief will not stop us. And so that incurable disease in the past till yesterday, you were incurable. This day, there is cure. This day there is skill. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I stand for power into your life right now. Authority into your life right now. By the anointing that breaks the yoke, I break every yoke in your life. Be free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that our victory will not just be for today, till the rest of our lives. Giants under our feet. Giants under our feet. Giants under our feet. We move on from victory to victory, from glory to glory. We have a from now on in Jesus' name. We're saved. We're free. We're healed. We're delivered. 
Our freedom will be permanent in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.